8.3, Day 2, Type 2, Volume by Revolution. Example, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by y equals 1 half x squared, x equals 0, and x equals 2 about the x-axis. And I have another demonstration of this. I don't really like it as much as the one we saw yesterday, but uh, it uses more of a Ryman sum approach. But hopefully it gives you an idea of what this solid would look like. Now here we have uh, y equals 1 half x squared, it's a parabola, and we're going from 0 to really an arbitrary value here, but let's say it could be 0 to 2, it's going to be uh, pretty much the same shape. Let's uh, show all the original rectangles. Now here's more of a Ryman sum approach to this problem, and we're going to show the reflected area. So this is like a 180 degree turn when we revolve this shape around the x-axis. And we're going to revolve one of the rectangles. So this is the shape that we're looking at. And it reminds me of, if you've ever played the game Sorry, they have the little game pieces. This is kind of what it, what it looks like in my opinion. And we're going to repair, prepare to revolve another one. In other words, it starts it over again. And then uh, we're going to see all the disks in the washer. So if you could revolve this shape around the x-axis, this is the kind of shape it would be. Uh, given kind of like I said a Ryman approach, uh, but the edges would be smooth and we'd have this uh, this kind of game piece shape when uh, we form the solid. Let's look at the math of this problem and let's uh, let's graph it. There's the y-axis. Here's uh, there's the x-axis, and we have this parabola. And let's say this is two right here. Now let's form the, the 180 degree turn when we revolve this around the x-axis. So take any arbitrary x and revolve it around the x-axis and you have this shape. Pick another one and you would have this shape right here. Now the cross section is a circle. So if we find the area of the circle, we have the integral from 0 to 2 of pi r squared. But we want to take the integral with respect to x. The radius is the function value of these circles from the x-axis to the curve. And uh, so that's exactly what we want for the radius. We want the radius to be 1 half x squared. Now let's plug that in for r. We have integral 0 to 2. We can pull the constant out front, the pi, and we have 1 half x squared squared dx. And we're integrating from 0 to 2. We have pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 fourth x to the fourth, actually, uh, dx. And that's equal to pi times 1 20th x to the fifth from 0 to 2. We have pi times uh, 2 to the fifth is 32. We have 32 over 20 and then minus 0. And we're going to have... Uh, that reduces to 16 over 10 pi, which reduces to 8 pi over 5. Example, find the volume of the solid form by rotating the region bounded by y equals x and y equals 3x from x equals 0 to x equals 2 rotated about the x-axis. So here we have the line y equals x, and here we have the line y equals 3x. And, you know, they both have a y-intercept of 0, and then one has a slope of up 1 over 1. Another one has a slope of up 3 over 1. And let's, let's get the reflection of these two graphs. So over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1. So there's the line kind of like that. And then down 3 over 1. And then we have a line like that. Now we would rotate this the, the, the object, that the area is in between these two lines. And then we would rotate the inside one around like this. And then we could up, come up here and we would rotate uh, the, the top one around like that. And what you end up with is this washer effect. Uh, the volume is in between these two circles. Now we're integrating from 0 to 2. And we have the area of the outside circle. So pi times big R squared. We'd have the area of this big circle. And then we would minus the area of the little circle, but we're going to do this in x. We're going to take the integration with respect to the variable x. 
Now, if we take the area of the big circle minus the area of the little circle, then we're gonna have the area in between. And then the integration represents the volume, in other words, rotating this object around the x-axis. We can factor out a pi and then pull this out front, and we're integrating from zero to two. The big radius is represented by y equals 3x. We have 3x squared, because it's represented by this line right there. Those big circles are gonna follow, the, the radius of the big circle is gonna follow this line. And then minus, the little radius is represented by the function x. We have x squared dx. Well now everything's in x and we can just do the integration now. We have 9x squared minus x squared dx, which is equal to pi times zero, or times the integral from zero to two of eight x squared dx. And that's equal to pi times now, uh, we would have eight thirds x to the third. So we're integrating from zero to two. We have pi times eight times eight is 64. So this is really 64 pi over three, and then the zero would just give us minus zero. Example, find the volume of the region in the first quadrant bound by y equals 2 cosine x and y equals 2 from 0 to pi over 2 when that region is revolved about the line y equals 3. This time, we're not going to revolve this around the x-axis. We're going to revolve around the line y equals 3. So there's the x and the y-axis. Uh, let's go up to 2. And the curve y equals 2 cosine x, that starts up here at 2, and then we're going to hit 0 at pi over 2. And we're actually going from 0 to pi over 2. So this is going to curve down to pi over 2. And the region is bound by y equals 2. So it's bound by that line right there. And so it goes from 0 to pi over 2. So right there, there's the shape that we're looking at. Here is the area. And then we're gonna rotate that around the line y equals three. So we're gonna to go to y equals three. We're gonna rotate this around that line right there. Well now we have, really, if you pick an arbitrary x value from zero to pi over two, uh, the reflection is actually gonna be up here. And then if we draw the curve, that's the reflection. It's actually doing this action right there. Very roughly, of course. And then if we take this inside and rotate it around, we have the inside circle. And if we take this point and rotate it around, we have this outside circle right there. So we have kind of this game piece that we had before, except there's a hole in the middle. This would be the hole, and now we have this washer effect again. Well, if we're gonna have an, a, a washer effect, we have the integral from zero to pi over two times pi uh, big r squared minus pi little r squared. Now getting the radius of each of these is the tricky part on this one. Let's pull out the pi. We're integrating from zero to pi over two, and let's get the outside radius. And the outside radius really goes from here up to this curve right there. There's the outside radius. Or you could even say it'd probably be better to go from here to here since this is the function. Let's back that up. The outside radius goes from the middle right here and it could go down to this function right here. But the problem with that is function values always start from the x-axis. So if you pick this arbitrary x value and you plug it into two cosine x and get some sort of value, that value represents the distance from the x-axis up to the curve, but that's, that's not the radius. The radius is from uh, this curve up to y equals three. So we want to uh, take this much right here. We, this is what we wanna find, this much. Now if we take from zero to three, and minus out this function value, take that out, then we get the radius. So the big radius is three minus, there's all of that, and we're gonna minus out the function value, which is two 
cosine of x squared. The little radius on this one is a little bit easier because it's just between two lines. The little radius is actually a value of 1. So minus 1 squared dx. We have pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 9 minus 4 cosine of x and then plus 4 cosine squared of x and then minus 1 dx. We have pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 8 minus 4 cosine of x and then plus 4 cosine squared of x dx. Now let's, let's take out constants as we go. Let's factor out a 4. Now we have 4 pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2 minus cosine of x plus cosine squared x dx. The problem with this one is we, we know the integral of 2 and cosine but this is going to be a little bit of an issue. We have to remember that cosine cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. This is the double angle formula for cosine. Then we're trying to replace cosine squared, so we need to get rid of this sine squared. We have cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared of x minus 1 minus cosine uh, squared x. Cosine of 2x is equal to, we have 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. And then we need to get cosine squared by itself. We have cosine of 2x plus 1 is equal to 2 cosine squared x and then divide by 2. Cosine squared x is equal to 1 half cosine of 2x and then plus 1 half. Now we can replace this cosine squared with plus 1 half cosine of 2x plus 1 half dx and everything else is going to stay exactly the same. We have 4 pi integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2 minus cosine of x. Let's gather everything we can before we actually take the integral. We have uh, 2 here, 2 plus 1 half. 4 halves plus 1 half is going to be 5 halves. We have 4 pi integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 5 halves minus cosine of x and then plus 1 half cosine of 2x dx. All right, so now I think we're ready to do the integral. We have 4 pi, and then we have 5 halves x uh, minus sine of x. And then we have plus, let's do this, let's do sine of 2x. And then we have 1 fourth here. And we're integrating from 0 to pi over 2. Now if we took the derivative of this, we get cosine of 2x times 2 multiply 1 fourth times 2 and we would get the 1 half. Let's plug pi over 2 into everything. We'd have 4 pi times, uh, let's see, it'd be 5 pi over 4 and then minus the sine of pi over 2 is 1 and then the sine of pi is 0 so this piece would be 0 and then we would minus 0 minus sine of 0 is 0 and sine of 0 is 0 so this is what we get here. Now the 4's would cancel out when we distribute, so we'd have 5 pi squared minus 4 pi. 